Husband. Yes, wife? Let's read the Bible. But we're atheists. Why would we want to do such a thing? Because we live in small town USA and everyone around us quotes this thing extensively and we have no idea how to respond? That's true. Neither of us grew up with religion, yet Christianity is playing a huge part in our country's politics. We're not scholars or academics, so sacrilegious discourse is our first take reaction. This feed houses our reading of the book of Exodus, and each subsequent book will get its own separate feed too. Why are we separating each book? Not all podcast platforms allow access to older episodes. This will ensure our listeners don't lose access to any of our previously released material. You can find our most recent episodes on our main channel, Sacrilegious Discourse. That's right. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey you, welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. I'm wife. And together we're reading the Bible. Starting with Genesis and eventually ending with Revelations, we're working through every book and offering our atheist two cents. Or shekels. Yeah, those. We're asking questions and pointing out all the nonsense. We aren't academics or scholars. Nope. In fact, when it comes to religion, we really don't know anything at all. What we've learned so far is that God's a dick. Oh, he really is, isn't he? If you're interested in how we reached this startling conclusion, maybe start from episode one. Otherwise, jump in anywhere. It's all good. Yep. Husband. Yeah, wife. Um, do you remember what we talked about last time? Still seems like Moses. It was Moses. Awesome. It, it was about manna from heaven. That's right. And then I there was a reference to it like in some show we were watching the last day or two. What? Yeah, there was a reference to manna from heaven. I don't even recall that a bit, but it's a fairly common phrase. I know, but it was just weird because we had just talked about it or something. So, Are you sure I was watching it with you? Because I have no memory. Yeah, I that. actually looked at you to see if it registered with you, and it didn't. It clearly didn't. Yeah. Because it's such a common phrase. Right. Oh, we were watching Supernatural, and it was in Supernatural. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's a show about weird things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So they were doing manna from heaven and they had like measurements of exact th- how much they were supposed to fill for their household. And right. And do not do this and do this, but don't do that. Yeah. And always avoid yeast. Yeah. Yeast is just right out. not cool. Yeah. During seven days of the, or six days or something. I don't know. Yeah. And then like on the Friday, they have to like gather so much right quick to see through the weekend. So they have two days. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they can't gather on Saturday. Right. Sunday. Or- I thought. Whatever the fucking, what is it? The day of the Sabbath. Isn't that Sunday? Whatever that day is. I don't care. I'd have to care more. Okay. They're one weekend day. The Sabbath. Got it. Sabado. So, (laughs) what are we going over today? We are about to do Exodus chapters 17 and 18. All right. Well, let's go find out uh, what's going on. Maybe the mana will, like, poison them and they'll all die. Nah, I mean, anything's possible. It's just as likely as not. Right. Hey, wife. Yes, husband. Did you know that we are now on Patreon? Um, yes, because you told me, but also, no, tell me more. (laughs) So we're on Patreon now. Are we? We are. And our supporters can go there and support us. And we have multiple levels all the way up to You Killed God. That sounds really drastic and escalated quickly-ish. Well, no, there's multiple levels before there. So it, es- it es- escalates on a sliding scale of, you know, cheap to, to not cheap. Oh. But, you know, we can definitely use any amount. So, like, any support is always appreciated. So what exactly is patreon it's a place where you can show your support for our podcast and just our podcast any podcast or any (laughs) performer but you know we're the ones that you know you're listening to right now so maybe you should uh you know support us that'd be awesome that would be awesome but we love you anyway so all you got to do is go to patreon look up sacrilegious discourse it's actually patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse is our actual main page there so head on over and send us some love yeah Okay, Exodus chapter 17, water from the rock. You know, 17 is my lucky number, right? So this better be good. (laughs) Well, all I could think was water from the rock and... 
then I was thinking about The Rock, and then I was like, <laughs> then Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, yeah. That's a that's a walk. That is a walk. Yeah, but it's The Rock. It's The Walk for The Rock. Yeah. Okay. At the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of capital S sin and moved from place to place. Capital S sin. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, they camped at Rephidim. Rephidim? But there was no water there for the people to drink. That's the problem. Womp womp. So once more, the people complained against Moses. They complained against Moses. As opposed to not against him? Give us water to drink, they demanded. Quiet, Moses replied. Why would you move somewhere where there's no water? <laughs> I mean, they're just roaming. Roaming around. And they're like... Here's a good place to not stay. Let's stay. Right, but wouldn't you look for water? Like I, I would. Back in those days, it seems like a pretty vital thing to have around. Yes, I agree. But when Moses said, quiet, like it reminded me of that one commercial for Crohn's disease medicine where the blonde <laughs> lady, she turns to the camera and says, not now, Crohn's. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. Quiet, Moses said. Not now, Crohn's. Why are you complaining against me? And why are you testing the Lord? Because they're thirsty. Right? Yeah. They're thirsty, Like, man. it only takes a few days to die of thirst. So, right? Jesus, get this, get this shit figured out, man. Yeah. But tormented by thirst, they continued to argue with Moses. Huh? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? Uh... Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what should I do with these people? I mean, I think it's a pretty valid argument. Yeah. You know, like, no water. They are ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people. Take your staff, the one you used when you struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Sinai. Mm. See, I said it right that time. Yeah. yeah. Struck, strike the rock, struck the rock. Strike the rock and water will come gushing out. Then the people will be able to drink. He has to use his magic stick to hit a rock. God can't just make it fucking rain. Huh? I mean, that and there's no fucking water. So, like, I mean, what are they supposed to do? Start dropping off dead before they start complaining? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just like, what, what is the alternative He's mad here? that they're complaining about dying of thirst. It's just, it's just bullshit. Yeah. So Moses struck the rock as he was told, and water gushed out as the elders looked on. Moses named the place Massa, which means test, and Meribah, which means arguing, because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord here with us or not? So is it called Massa or Meribah, or is it called Massa Meribah? Massa Meribah, like argue test. I guess, okay. Crybaby whiners who are... are Upset that they're dying of thirst. <laughs> That's what it's called. God. The war with Amalek. While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. The end. Just kidding. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and her, her, her. I that. that was in another part of the Bible, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Climbed to the top of a knee, knee by, nearby hill. <laughs> as long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. Oh, that's lucky. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Why would he drop his hand then? Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. So his hands held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. That is I'm so sorry, magic. But you have God on your side, right? He just crushed an entire Egyptian army mm -hmm. underneath the, the sea. Yeah. And... Now Moses has to stand on a hill with his fucking hand up for hours, like yeah. all day. Yeah. So that they can win a battle. Yeah. This sounds like bullshit to this me. This sounds like torture. And meanwhile, they may be winning, but people are fucking dying. Right. And right. these are, you know, God's supporters and God's chosen people. Right. And he's letting them die. When he could just when end, he could it just end with it. no deaths or involved. like you know they could even just like show the mighty power of god and convert them probably oh, yeah, if, if he been, wanted to yeah 
Yeah, I'm that's just saying. true. Well, I wonder why he didn't want those people. What was wrong with them? Maybe they liked to die of thirst. Maybe they weren't such whiners about dying of thirst. Right, yeah. I don't know. How did they live there without water? Why were they there? Well, they were invading, so they probably live where there is water. Because well, they're smart. How far away could it be then? And why didn't Moses just take his people there? I don't know. See, this whole thing doesn't make sense. But when in the battle should not be determined upon how ho- long you can hold your fucking hand up. <laughs> That's hilarious. After the victory, the Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it aloud to Joshua. I will erase the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Well, but what? you didn't erase the memory of it because you wrote it on a script. <laughs> right? And then it's but now wait, in the why, Bible. Why are we erasing it? Like, Apparently is... they were really bad because they went up against Moses. I don't know why. Okay. Those details are left out, but we're supposed to hate them apparently. Okay. Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. Okay. He said they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne. No, I I don't think they raised their fist against the Lord's throne. I think they raised their fist against people on their land. Right? Like. Yeah. Like these people were walking to people's land and they're like, we're here. And then they like expect to be what? Like. Like, welcomed? Yeah, like, welcome with open arms. Obviously, there's not much water, so, like, you know, get the fuck away and go find something else, Right? Like, they probably had, like, no trespassing signs up on their land, and then Moses took his people anyway, and then the people were like, dudes, there's not enough water, get gone. And then Moses was probably like, no, we want your land and your water, and, and we have the Lord on our side, and they were probably like, magic, whatever. And then... He was like, look, I can raise my stick in the air. (laughs) And then the guys were probably like, "Mm, okay, so right. And so then they attacked them. And then Moses was like, womp, womp, you're dead. Only it took like all day. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel sorry for the Amalekites or whatever the fuck they're called. Whatever. You know why? Because I don't know their side of the story. And I was taught that everybody has two sides of a story. Right. And I don't know their side. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, Moses said, they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne, so now the Lord will be at war with Amalek's generation after generation. The end. I, what? I, I don't... I... <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. It's so asinine. Right. They fought us, therefore they're eternal enemies of, the, of God. Yeah. Of a God. L- but because there me... are gods, according to the Bible. Right. So there's multiple gods, and they're eternal enemies now for fighting them even though we fought back and we won right but let me ask you this like this doesn't even mention did those people even know that they were on god the lord yahweh's side i don't know but they sure i mean like god's side sure seems like a bunch of sore winners sore winners assholes um thieves marauders yeah they're horrendous and also, they're whiny because they don't like dying of thirst. And they were in somebody else's land. I know. Like, guys, <laughs> this is not cool. This is not how you behave. This is not what we teach kids to do when they are children. <sighs> Jesus can't come soon enough. <laughs> and on that note. Yeah, let's go on to the next chapter. All right. All right. Okay, let's try this again, husband. Yeah, I fucked that one up. Yeah, you did. We're to take two now, which is never quite as good. So I apologize in advance for that. So you guys are going to miss out on this whole story about socks. Yeah, socks. and and, It was a good end, and I'm sorry for you. Anyway, Exodus chapter 18, Jethro visits Moses. Maybe we'll cover socks in a special episode or something. Oh, my God. Probably not. It wasn't that good. (laughs) Basically, I'll give you a synopsis. Amazon Echo added socks to our wish list on whatever because it wanted to because it was like, you're short. And we're like, fuck you and like whatever. And now we're done. Okay, moving on. You just raped that story. I really did. bastardized it. I mean, I didn't rape it as much as God raped shit in the fucking Bible. Oh, my God. What the hell? That is. You're not okay. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, um, Jethro visits Moses. We already went over. Um, wasn't Jethro Tull a singer and Jethro right. was a character on the Beverly Hillbillies. Right. And then I asked you about um, what songs he sang 
Jethro Tull and you were like, I don't know. And that's when you mentioned having to ask the Amazon Echo. Yeah. And then that's when we got onto the story about the socks that she wanted to add to my cart. So, yeah. okay, now you're all caught up on everything you missed, guys. Yeah, that was it. That, that was, was it. it. So Moses' father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, 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 I don't Something. know. Heard about everything God had done for Moses and his people, the Israelites. He heard especially about how the Lord had rescued them from Egypt. Earlier, Moses had sent his wife Zipporah and her two oh, and his two sons back to Jethro, who had taken them in. And here's where we enter a parentheses aside because it's completely unimportant to the story. Right. Parentheses. Moses' first son was named Gershom, for Moses had said when the boy was born, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. And that is where the title of um, Robert A. Heinlein's book, Stranger in a Strange Land, comes from. Awesome. Just so you know. Good to know. His second son was named Eliezer, for Moses had said, the God of my ancestors was my helper. He rescued me from the sword of Pharaoh. End parentheses. Back to the story. Okay. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, now came to visit Moses in the wilderness. He brought Moses' wife and two sons with him, and they arrived while Moses and the people were camped near the mountain of God. Jethro had sent a message to Moses saying, I, Jethro, your father-in-law, am coming to see you with your wife and your two sons. Mwah, see? Mwah. Okay, well, I'll be, um, be waiting for you. Like, okay, when I go to visit my parents, I don't just say, I, your daughter, am coming to visit your house. <laughs> Like, well, this was a, you know, I mean, how did they communicate about it? They probably had to send messengers. So, like, and then and then there was, like, this whole respect and, and tear thing of, like, things and stuff. So they probably sent somebody who was like, I'm relaying a message for you, sire. And, you know, all that kind of shit. And, I mean. Um, whatever. But how about asking? Not just saying, I'm coming. Y'all better clean up and get my bedroom See, but that ready. takes too much time. If you just send a message saying, I'm coming, at least they got a heads up. And then you don't got to send a message in return. You just wait for them to show up. Whatever. I mean, like, it's just I like do, a matter of resources. I do call my mom first to tell her I'm coming to visit. So she has time to put a bra on before right. I get See, that's there. all he's doing. He's like, I'm coming, yo. Do you call your mom before you come to visit? Well, yeah. What Are you asking or announcing? It depends on the situation. I mean, me generally, I'm like, hey, I'm in the area. Do you mind if I stop by? Right. But that's both a ask and a tell. Sometimes I tell my mom I'm stopping by because she's stupid with electronics and she needs oh help. Gosh. And I'm like, I'm just coming over. I'll be there in a few. Yeah. Yeah. So. She needs lots of help with apps on her phone. Yeah. Yeah. Boomers. What right. What are going to do? Yeah. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. He bowed low and kissed him. They asked about each other's welfare and then went into Moses' tent. Moses told his father-in-law everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh in Egypt on behalf of Israel. He also told about all the hardships they had experienced along the way. Things like um, how they were going to die of thirst. Right, right. And how the Lord had rescued his people from all their troubles. Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel as he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians. Praise the Lord, Jethro said, for he has rescued you, you from the Egypts and from Pharaoh. Yay. Yay. There was much rejoicing. Bow, bow, bow. Yes, he has rescued Israel from the powerful hand of Egypt, exclamation mark. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods. Huh? The other huh? gods. The yeah, other there gods. they are again. There's other gods. There's other gods. Because he rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. I gave him a really proud voice because it's fun to sometimes do that. Right. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. How come they have to say that every time? Like... I know that we were just talking about Jethro, but I want to remind you every sentence who he is. He's Moses' father-in-law. Right. Brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God, this particular God, the Yahweh one. Right. Not any of the other ones that clearly also existed. I want to see like a God fight. That'd be awesome. Right? Like one God fights another God. Well, like I know on Supernatural they had an angel versus demon showdown. Right. Yeah. That was cool. But I want to see two gods fight. Well, on Lucifer, we have um, two angels fighting, but then God comes down to stop them. I want to see, like, Buddha versus God. Buddha oh versus gosh. Yahweh. Oh, gosh. That's not nice. No? No. Oh. Wait. On Supernatural, there was one one episode where all the different gods were staying at, like, this hotel, and then they were all fighting <laughs> each other. Do you remember that? No. That was kind of cool. I don't. 
Aaron and all the elders of the Israel came out and joined him in a sacrificial meal in God's presence. Oh, so God was there, eh? I guess, but what does that really mean? Was he just a cloud hovering over the meal? Was he a pillar? <laughs> was the Lord of the angel there instead of God? Right. Was he a burning bush? I don't know. We don't know. The appointment of judges. You're a judge. The next day, Moses took his seat to hear the people's disputes against each other. Oh, I guess he made himself a king. I what? guess, yeah. They waited before him from morning till evening. That job would be so boring. Right. When Moses' father-in-law, whose name is Jethro, saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, What are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do all this alone while everyone stands around you from morning till evening? Moses replied, Because the people come to me to get a ruling from God. When a dispute arises, they come to me, and I am the one who settles the case between the quarreling parties. I inform the people of God's decrees and give them his instructions. Sounds legit, right? I mean, if you put yourself in that position, you yeah. know, I yeah. guess you got to deal with the, the relaying of the info. Right? This is not good, Moses' father-in-law exclaimed. Who the hell is he to say? Well, he decided with his powerful, loud voice, I am coming to visit. I am going to judge how you do things now. God, wah, has, wah, wah. God hasn't complained yet. Well, maybe God is complaining through Jethro. Maybe. You're going to wear yourself out, and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. Boy, now, he hasn't worked in corporate America then. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice. And may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. Teach them God's decrees and give them his instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives. But select from all the people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Ah, it's delegation. Yeah, yeah, delegation. But how do you know ahead of time who hates bribes? Do you just, like... Hope that they, you seem like a really nice guy. I'm going to trust Maybe you. his rod will tell him. Like, he just holds it over their head. Okay, you're good. What if his rod is his penis and then he has to hold his penis? We covered that in another episode. I don't know. And, and whatever. It didn't go well. It's not, it's yeah. not, yeah. Okay, it doesn't work. No. My bad. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,000. Wait, what? Hold on. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. They should always be available to solve the people's dis common disputes. Where the fuck did they get that number from? I don't know. Jethro pulled that out of his ass. <laughs> but have them bring the major cases to you. Let the leaders decide the smaller matters themselves. Wah, wah, wah. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. If you follow this advice and if God commands you to do so, then you will be able to endure the pressures and all these people will go home in peace. So let me get this straight. Some crazy magic dude. Is like setting up a government, basically. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I think that there is a downfall to this. Like, before, he was hearing both small and silly cases, as well as important, big, hard cases. Now, he's only going to be hearing the worst of the worst. Right. Like, with no respite in between. Yeah, and he, he gets... won't really know what's going on with the common man. Right, right. So, I don't know that being at the top and... Letting other people handle the minutia is is the best. Yeah. Yeah. But having said that, Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice and followed his suggestions. He chose capable men from all over Israel and pointed them as leaders over the people. He put them in charge of groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. These men were always available to solve the people's common disputes. They brought the major cases to Moses, but they took care of the smaller matters themselves. Soon after this, Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law, who returned to his own land. The end. It was a good thing Jethro came to set up a government, Whew. huh? I am so glad we had Jethro around to take care of things. I mean... What would Moses do without Jethro right? coming in and stirring up shit? Hey, thanks, Pops. Yo, see ya. Right? Hey, honey, when's your dad leaving? Can it be tomorrow? I hate him. <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah. No, he sounded like a know-it-all. I mean, Moses just split a fucking sea, crushed armies. Yeah. And, like, don't mind me, but and Jethro's okay. like, uh, dude, you need to delegate more. Yeah. And he's like, you're right. And right? so he does. And at the end. Yeah. I wonder how God feels about it, though. Right? Like, maybe God wants him to do all this shit. Everything. Yeah. He never said anything about 
that one way or the other. Yeah. I don't know. The whole thing is a little questionable if you ask me. Yep. Well, that's it for this week. That's it for this week. So join us next week when we go over... Exodus chapters 19 and 20. There you go. Glad she looked it up. Yep. All right. See you guys. (laughs) Bye. Yes, wife. Um, is there a way for people to contact us? Well, sure. They can uh, get on our Twitter account. We have a Twitter account? We do. What is it? It is sacrilegious underscore D. Like D for discourse? Yeah, they wouldn't let me put the whole thing, so I had to shorten it to underscore D. I hate them. Yeah, that's disgusting. How do you spell sacrilegious? Do you know? I don't want to. Just look it up in a <laughs> dictionary or something. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do that right now. You know why? Sacrilegious you, underscore D, okay? Because you messed it up and I made you fix it. That's why. Yeah, yeah. What about an email? Yeah, we got that too. What Sac- is it? Sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. Oh, well, that's easy. Yeah. As long as you know how to spell sacrilegious. Right. Well, definitely get a hold of us. Let us know what you th- thought of the episode and, you know, any comments, hate mail. We love that kind of stuff. Also, you could answer some questions that we leave throughout or, like, correct my pronunciations. Yeah, are probably please. probably bad, wrong, and horrible. Because we suck sometimes. Absolutely! Oh, also, you know, if you like this shit or whatnot, um, like, give us a like on your podcasting app and stuff or even leave a comment or something. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Goodbye. Goodbye.